Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Local Governance and Community Development series here on the Serenity Resource Connector. Whether you're joining us live or you're watching the replay, as always, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Just continue to stay tuned in, share the link, make sure as many of your community members are joining us so that they can get the information so we know what's happening in the parish, what's the responsibilities, the functions of the municipal corporation. And remember, we do this each fourth Thursday with the municipal corporation team there in Clarendon. And for this episode, we are going to be looking at the commercial services department. But before we get into this episode's conversation, let's look at a highlight from our first episode with CEO of the Municipal Corporation, Ron Blake. Let's hear what Mr. Blake had to share. We have seven departments and um, three units um, that carry out the operations of the corporation. We have the commercial services um, department and that department deals with its ensuring that we our facilities are run at um, even a break-even uh, point. So it's, that department manages the markets and the parks, transportation centers, um, the cemeteries, um, the abattoirs, um, phones, um, any facility that we own. Um, it ensures that it is run and managed um, so to ensure that it's self-sufficient. All right, so we had, had indicated on the episode with the Director of Finance, Mr. Wayne Brown, that he has an awesome responsibility in terms of managing the budget and all of that. But our guests for this episode, joining me now, Ms. Nikita Francis, the Commercial Services Manager, Oh, welcome to the Serenity Resource Connector space, Lady Francis. Thank you. Awesome to be here. Good night to all your viewers. Great. Right. I can imagine with this awesome responsibility for the Commercial Services Department to ensure that you at least break even. I can imagine you have a lot of meetings with the CEO and the, the Director of Finance. Yes, so. Yes, I do, I do. <laughs> right, because with all that's happening there, this entity is responsible for bringing in most of the revenue? Not most, but a good percentage of the revenue. Good percentage, okay. All right, let's look at the different areas then. Mr. Blake outlined them quite nicely in terms of the some of the the public facilities that you have responsibility for managing. So let's take a look at each of them. Um, how many of them we have across the parish? Where exactly are they located? Are they being fully utilized? That kind of conversation. So let's start right. with parks. How many parks do we have in Clarendon? All right, so as it relates to the transportation center, that, that's what you're referring to as parks. We have, um, Six. We have the main park that's on Sevens Road in Mayfin Town. We have Veer Park, which is more popular called the Kingston Bus Park. We have the Eagle Park, which is across from the police station where the Mandeville Taxi is parked. We have a taxi park in Spalding, and we have one in Chapelton that we do not collect from, but that's in Chapelton. And we also have the private um, parking lot in by our main building on 370. So those six parks are monitored by the commercial services department. Okay, so for any public um, transportation operator that wants to utilize that space, what's the process for them to have access? Uh, once, once they're registered with um, the transport authority, we don't restrict them from using the facility. So it's open to all. Once you're a registered PPV operator. 
Okay, so they do not pay any direct, make any direct payment to the municipal corporation. You just control? How is the we have a, We have a collector that works at each park. So that collector collects the daily fees from the individual operators. Uh -huh. Okay. So, so do they have to the display a private park parking lot? Which is the transport authority monitors the badges, but they should have their badge on display. But once the vehicle drives into the facility, we will collect from them. Okay, so they um they do not have to show that they are registered with the transport authority. They just pay for use. Yeah, for the vehicle use. Yeah. All right. But we work with so the transport authority. So from time to time they will go into the parks and monitor and do their checks. Awesome. All right. Tell us about the private yeah. park. Okay, How does so the, the private, private park parking it, it's um basically a or hourly parking so for the first two hours it's a hundred dollars every hour after it's fifty dollars so it's it's right between the courthouse and the admin building okay all right mm -hmm. recreational centers do we have any right. if you do where are they all right so currently um we now manage the start around minerals bar that is uh -huh. Thought about that in South Clarendon. So we monitor that. We recently signed an MOU to monitor um, Jackson Bay. That's important cottage. That's also in South Clarendon. So um, it will be monitored by a community group, but with the supervision of the corporation. We there is Thompson Town Community Complex. That's in Thompson Town, that's in North Clarendon. We also have an MOU with a community group there that monitors the facility and manages it. Likewise, with Craftsill Cultural Center, that's in North Clarendon also. So those four facilities are manned by the Commercial Services Department. All right. Um, moving down, Animal Pound. Do we have animal pound? Okay, so we currently only have one animal pound in Clarendon, yes. And that is located in Chapelton. So we monitor that from time to time. You have persons from St. Catherine who utilizes the pound from time to time and also from Manchester okay. who uses the pound from time to time. All right, mm -hmm. so it's operational then? It is, it is, it is. All right, that's good. All right, cemeteries. Oh, okay. So we have the Denby Cemetery that's in Central Clarendon. We have the Penance and Sutton Cemetery that's in North Clarendon. We have um, Commissary that's in Frankfield, but that's closed. But we still have to bush and maintain the cemetery. We have Chapleton that's in the north also. We have current fees, new lands, and new. We currently um, start managing newborn cemetery. So those three cemeteries are more like community cemeteries, even though we're, they're monitored by us, but they're more community cemeteries. Um, we monitor the Raymond Cemetery, but that's closed, but we still have to maintain it in terms of bushing. And the Rocky Point Cemetery is not closed. However, due to the lack of space right now, we're not accepting any applications or Rocky Point Cemetery. Okay, when you say closed, is, does that mean they are full to capacity? What does that mean? Yes, once they're closed, the, um, the minister closes the cemetery because there is no more space for us to put anybody's. Okay, so in that instance, those community would have to use the neighboring cemetery? That's correct. Or if the individual wants to do cremation, that's also an option. So. Okay. All right. What about public sanitary conveniences? Okay. So all our markets and transportation centers have public convenience. So um, in Maypen, we have two main public convenience. One in the Bear 
no, we have more than two, sorry. We have one in the Bear Park, we have one in the Eagle Park, we have one in Main Park, and we have one in the market. So that's four where persons can access. It's $40 per use. Okay, and that helps with the maintenance and all of that, I would imagine, to make sure that you that's have right. all the toiletries in there. All right. Uh, that's right. All right, markets. How many markets all right, so we are there? We have six markets within the parish, right? You have Maypen Market, which is our largest market. Then you have Kelly's Market, Chapelton Market, Frankfield Market, Spalding Market, and Rocky Point Market. Okay. Yeah. So those are our six markets within the town, within the parish, sorry. All right. And um, in terms of access to the markets, uh, how do vendors All right. so in the markets? In order to use the markets, you are supposed to be registered with the municipal corporation. So in order to be registered, we have a registration form that you fill out, fill out all the information completely, and you are allotted a space within the market. Once that space is assigned, then you are allowed to use the market and pay the stipulated market fees based on what it is that you're selling. So if it's a shop that you have, the fee is determined based on the shop. If you only have goods, it's um, determined by the amount of goods that are taken daily to the market. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any other area that we did not cover that falls under facilities? Um, we also, we also home barrel. We also monitor home barrels within the parish. Uh -huh. So if, you, if it is that you're going to do a home barrel, you have to come to the corporation first and make an application for that home barrel. So for home barrels, we work hand in hand with the public health department. So the application is made here and it is also um, approved based on the recommendation of public health. All right. All right. That's that's something new. That's something new right there. And uh, the comments are rolling in. Great night, Lady Doreen Brown. Great to have you as always. Lady Anne-Marie Golding McGregor. Good to have you. Andrea Blake digging up her boss. She's listening live. Great job from Frano. All right. Martin Samuel says, interesting janice booth great to have you informative thus far great night to you all very good so far ethelyn mackenzie brown amiga very informative thank you all for chiming in and remember you can ask your questions as the discussion progresses and uh, we will take them at the intervals and continue to comment and as we share all right, so we have just looked at the different public facilities that are there in Clarendon. And we very interested information indeed. All right, and it's a commercial services department that manages the revenue portfolio, right, Ms. Francis? The revenue. The That's income, right. Right, the income from the self-financing arm of the corporation. All right. All right. So um, talk about self-financing. You talk about finance, you have to talk about management because really and truly that's what you're supposed to be doing, managing and maintaining. And you mentioned before in terms of the even the cemeteries that are closed that you do maintenance. How are these um, being managed, maintained? All right, so the commercial service department is comprised of approximately 70 awesome persons who work. So we have um, the enforcement team, we have the cemetery keepers, we have the market supervisors, we have the market collectors, the municipal wardens, we have our cemetery keepers, I said that already, I have my admin assistant and the enforcement officer and our bathroom attendants, the market cleaners. So it's a host of persons like a good engine. You have to have the gears turning. So everybody work together to ensure that everything comes um, in one. So 
the um for revenue generation, the cemetery keepers monitor monitor the persons who come to do the burial in tangent with the office. So once right. the space is there, the persons come to the corporation. So that's how we get revenue in um to do the maintenance for the cemeteries. The markets, likewise, the market fees that are collected and the bathroom fees that are collected, that is what we, we use to maintain the markets. For the transportation centers, likewise, the revenue generated from the bathrooms there and from the operators, that's what we use to maintain the transportation centers. As it relates to salt raw mineral, um, that re those revenues are as a result of the tenants there paying their rents each month and also from the bathroom we collect money from the bathroom but entry into Saldivar is free we don't charge you only pay to use the bathroom right um, as it relates to Thompson Town and Jackson Bay those are MOUs with the community so the community mostly maintains it however if there's an event um, the places of amusement the licenses and compliance department will um, collect revenue from that and also if we rent a lot of spaces so based on that we'll use that money to maintain those facilities all right that's great which means that mm. for the past two years we have been low on funds for the salt river and some of these um places of amusement because of the pandemic mm -hmm. that's correct how are, how are we doing correct. so far that's, that's that correct way? Right. How are we doing so far now that things are have opened up somewhat? Um, we have seen an increase in our revenue over the past couple of months. For the last quarter of the financial year, it hasn't looked so bad. I mean, we still have the bills that we have to pay, the JPS and the water bills and stuff. And, you know, with the increase in gas prices and so we didn't budget for that, yes. but we're still managing as best as we can. Indeed, none of us could have budgeted for the gas increase at all. It's just out of work. All right, we have a question mm -hmm. here from Andrea Blake. When will the top of Spalding Market be put on? All right. All right. So um, currently, um, I don't know if you know Spalding Market, but um, the project is over ninety million dollars. So we're actually seeking funding. We're um. I, we're working along with the leader officer, that's the local economic development officer. She's writing a project currently to see if we can get funding to complete that building. But hopefully we'll see that in the near future that building is completed. All right, so we're gonna have to get some some engines churning on that, on that one. So Spalding can be um, looking good, right? Welcome lady Ava Tomlinson. Very informative and MT thugs. I hope I'm not butchering your name. MTT, wonderful love where Mapin is going. Uh, thank you so much. Let me bring the name on screen, let you see why I'm having such a challenge <laughs> with it. Great to have you. Great to have you. Right. Very informative. All right. Andrea, beginning up our boss uh, as usual. Great night, Jen White. Good to have you. All right. So, um, in terms of the, all right, the question that was asked just now leads us into the next um, segment of the discussion in terms of the plans for developing the existing facilities and to it, bring on new ones on stream because the parish is growing, and I would imagine that there must be some plans to put in some new facilities in place. So what plans do we have so far in terms of that area? You're muted. All right, awesome. Um, so for existing facilities, as we're saying, we're trying to monitor our expenses to see how best we can have our income outweigh our expenses to improve our current facilities. For the Maple market, we're also seeking partnership to see how best we can, can turn that market into a modern market. Um, as it relates to establishing new facilities, we are currently um, 
seeking lands to establish a new modern cemetery. The design is already done. That was done by the planning and development department along with the roads and works department. So as soon as we find lands for that new cemetery, we'll establish that new modern cemetery. Um, we are also seeking additional lands for transportation centers. As you know, parking is a big problem, especially in the capital. Right. So we're currently um, in that and also in Kellitz, because Kellitz is a fast growing town, one of the fastest growing towns in Tyrion, actually. And they have an issue with parking. So we are in dialogue with persons to acquire lands to create parking space there. All right. And we have a comment here from Shanae Smith in Kellitz. It appears that you're doing a great job in Kellitz. Keep it up. All right. So as you work on the parking great. for Kellitz, let's keep up the great job at the market. Great night, Michael Thompson. Very informative and good to know what's happening in my own parish. Awesome. Stick with us, Michael. We do this every Thursday, 8 p.m., where we have discussions with different entities there in Clarendon. All right. El Bueno, what are the plans to develop Forca Beach in Milk River? Is Forca Beach one of the facilities? All right. So for Walker Beach is, does not fall under um, mm. commercial services department. However, I know that the leader officer, along with the disaster coordinator, um, have plans with for the Walker Beach development. Also, the council and the MP for that area have, I think there's a proposal. So I know that the road leading up to Walker will be fixed. And uh, there are plans in place to develop that area because it leads to Milk River Spa, which is one of Clarendon's biggest recreational areas. So I know they have plans in place for that. All right, great. I trust that helps, El Bueno. All right, hardworking stuff. Keep it up, my lady. All right, Kenneth, da Sir Davis, mm -hmm. welcome. Great to have mm -hmm. you. All right, let's see. She seems to have it all together, safe to say all we are in good hands. I hope more sponsors will come on so the necessary revenues can be generated. Proud moment. Good job, Miss Francis. Uh, that's so nice. All right. And that's one of the reasons why we are here. Oh, my goodness. We are so we're in tune with with the comments this mm -hmm. evening because that's where we're going next in ter terms of public private partnership. Right. How can the community-based organizations, the community development groups, Clarendonians in the diaspora, Clarendonians in general, support the efforts at the municipal corporation? Uh, I mean, it's very simple. Once there's an area that you see you want to develop, you can just write a letter to the CEO. He, he will dispatch it to the relevant department. If it is that it comes under the commercial services, it will, forward, it will be forwarded to my department. Um, they have rules and regulations that govern how monies are transferred to the corporation. So the CFO would give you that outline. But once it is that there's an area, say Maple Market, you want to put a mural there or you want to drop some containers or so, you can just write a letter to the CEO expressing your interest in assisting in developing a particular area and they will outline how it is that you go about it. But I think Clarendon is in need of a lot more public-private partnerships in all areas. So it would be awesome if persons can contact the corporation directly to do that. Whether it be market, transportation centers, or the recreational parks, or the gardens that are in the, in the town. So if a, corporate, if a corporate company wants to sponsor a green space, they can also do that by um, expressing interest to the CEO. All right, great. Um, something that came to mind, though, in terms of because we know a number of the community groups, especially our youth groups, they do a lot in terms of beach cleanup, those kind of activities. Can we open up the avenue for them to assist in other areas in terms of um, where the maintenance is concerned, where there's some sort of partnership there? 
Is there any other area? Um, that sure. If it, is, if it is, it's, um, as I say, it's not a hard process. If it is that you have a group that is good with plumbing or electrical or anything, and you see something in the market where you think you can assist, you write it to the CEO, he'll forward it, he'll probably copy it to the Rosa Works Department because they're the technical arm and also the commercial services department. And then we will work together to see how best the Rosa Works would monitor that project for them to do it. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a beach cleanup. We currently um, got requests from persons to do a beach cleanup at Santa Rana or Jackson Bay, and those were approved. So I think this summer we'll have persons doing beach cleanup. But if it is you have persons who are good in the art field and you have a final project and you want to do a mural within the market space, we are open to anything. So it's not limited to beach cleanups or that, right? All right, as we're on beach cleanup, because I did get um, an inquiry recently, someone in um, that's doing, as you said, they're um, doing a, an assignment. And part of that has to do with some community work. What's the process for these students who want to do beach cleanup activities? What do they need to do? It's very, very simple. You just write to the CEO outlining what it is that you want to do, outlining the scope of work, and giving a background of your organization and, and the legitimacy of it. If it is that you can get a recommendation from a JP or so to support your document, that would be good. And you just send it to the CEO and he'll forward it to the relevant persons. If it is that from time to time, um, we'll get questions from university students. They'll send us emails as it relates to our um, markets and they want statistics and so, And we willingly provide the information. So it's not like it's closed. Once you, once you make a request, we are here to serve. So we have to respond. All right. Sounds really great. And ideas swirling in my mind now because what I'm hearing is that there is likely collaboration between the CMC and HART for those um, these, this assessment. Because as you mentioned, in terms of the electricians wanting to um, do some work in the market space and so on. That's something that we can look at. How do you partner with HART so that those young people who need to be assessed for the different skill sets in, in different areas? All right, something to think about. I'll send in my invoice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, great. We're getting very informative session so far. All right, Andrea, we need more containers in Spalding. A lot of Persons come daily seeking more opportunities. All right. So um, as I said, for Spalding's market, once it is that that building is completed, because we have two more floors to build on, the, on that building. Currently, the market only the basement is completed. So we have a mezzanine floor and also a first floor to complete, a ground floor, sorry, to complete. So we have three-story building. So once that's completed, then we'll have enough shop space for all those persons in Spalding's. All right. All right. Pauline, sounds like it's really growing and growing fast. I mean, all the towns in Clarendon are really growing. Spalding, we have tours, tour buses coming through Spalding on a weekly basis. Kelly, it's, um, it's, it's growing really fast. Most of our towns are growing really fast. Frankfield is also seeing development there. We have... Um, divested a section of the market so you'll soon have more life in Frankville. so i mean all our towns are growing right but are the market spaces fully occupied all right currently none of our market spaces are fully current um occupied contrary to what people believe the mayfair market have a lot of under you underutilized and unutilized spaces right um but i think what happens the culture of Clarendon persons are that you have to be on Main Street in order to make money. So they refuse to go in the market. So that's why persons are of the opinion that hey, the market is full and we don't have any space and we can't walk in there and all of that. But we do have a lot of unutilized space. The market house itself is a great example of the underutilized space within the market. Maple market, that is. All right. And the discussion is flowing very fluidly because that's the next area that we want to look at in terms of 
enforcement because part of the responsibility of the local authority, which is the municipal corporation, is to ensure that the laws and the acts that are in place are maintained because um, one of the responsibilities clearly outlined by the ministry is that the municipal corporations are responsible for controlling street parking and public vending, two very sore areas very sore areas up to this week had some uh some very interesting developments in the business community but let's start here because this is a public education forum and um as we have been hearing very informative because this is what we seek to do so you can have a better understanding of how these different entities operate the services that are offered how you can access the services and also how you can help to improve the services all right so why is it important for these spaces to be controlled in terms of street parking and public vending all right so as i mentioned a major responsibility of the local authority is to guide orderly and safe development right Orderly and safe development cannot take place if we have illegal vending and illegal parking taking place. As a matter of fact, these two nuisances will cripple the development of the parish. Right? So it's very important that we monitor these. Um, we have there's an agro team of the JCF arm that works along with the municipal police, the corporation's enforcement team. So on a daily basis, they will go out to try and ensure that the streets well, the sidewalks are clear of vendors and also the streets are clear of illegal parking. So we have um, our clamping team out and also the anti-vending team out on a daily basis. Um, I think earlier this year, the Disabilities Act was um, enforced. Right. So um, due to that fact, it is our duty to ensure that the sidewalks are safe so that all persons can access the sidewalks. So it's not that the enforcement team are oppressors. It's just that we are trying to have some order within the town by doing by ensuring that those vendors go in the market. However, we do know that um, with any growing parish, we need to have different policies in place. So we are working on a street vending policy. This policy has been vetted by the JCF and also by the MOH, the Ministry of Health. So we work along with these persons. So as soon as we fine tune that street vending policy, then it will be circulated for views of the public. And then we'll start enforcing more. We have, um, what it will do is highlight designated vending areas within the township each township, not just Mapen, but all the townships, and also the type of goods that can be sold in each area. Sounds good. All right. I don't know why you have either thinker as your handle. You need to change that because this is a very good <laughs> it's a very good um question. While I understand the services, how do you educate the uneducated on how to understand their responsibilities? Uh, this is a very intelligent question. It doesn't match your hat. All right. Um, Go ahead, Lady Francis. How, how, how do you do that? Covered in the act that you're working on. All right. So we have the public relations officer, or Miss Shani Samuels. She ensures that we have creative ways of sending out messages and sending out the information as it relates to the acts that guide us. So for vending, we um, the Sale of Goods Act is what we work with along with the Town and Communities Act. So whether it is she do a video, we'll do town cries, we'll do flyers, so as to inform persons about it. We also do one-on-one -on -one dialogue with them. There are town hall meetings kept throughout the parish. These town hall meetings, we have... Um, more interaction with individuals who can tell them. They also are free to call our phones between the hours of 8.30 to 5. I don't know if that answers the question, Mr. I don't think. I hope it does. All right. And he's 
here she's thinking so you can share sounds good on paper how feasible is it for the relegate designated the designated areas while dealing with people who are just trying to eat a food the busy areas will always be favorable to all and um, that is what we are seeking to get away from in terms of the eat a food mentality that is not good for development and that is why we need to get from that place about eating a food because eating a food is often at the expense of progress and development all right, all right. um add on that miss francis just to, to note that um if vendors or if persons go about um vending correctly there are opportunities out there for them as once you are registered with the corporation you are basically an entrepreneur so if it is any letter to go anywhere you're registered with us and you're doing legitimate business we can offer that letter for you to go to embassy bank wherever it is if you have issues um the ministry of um, mlss will also assist you based on the fact that you're a registered vendor but if it if it is that you just take up yourself and go out there in the streets just to sell and you're not registered and you're breaking the law then we can't really support you that's right and mlss is the ministry of labor and social security right and um, remember we're talking about control in terms of because public vending has to be controlled as lady francis would have explained earlier there are various reasons why we need to have that properly controlled um as is lady francis um do we have non-clarendonians who occupy the market space yes um <laughs> the market space is not just for clarendon so we have a much um maybe 40 percent of the registered vendors are not from clarendon so um, we do have persons from various parts. St. Catherine, we have persons as far as from St. Elizabeth who come come to the market space to vend. All right. So they're uh, weekly based. Right. All right. Great. And we do have um, an association. Correct. And you yes, have there is a vendor association that that represents the vendors. So what it is um. Currently, we have over almost 2,000 vendors registered throughout the parish. So um, for Maypen, which is our largest vending area, we have an association that represents the vendors. So it's easier to dialogue with the association and the association spreads the information to the vendors as opposed to us having a one-on-one -on -one with each vendor. For the other markets, the market supervisors do an awesome job there. They monitor and ensure that all the needs of the vendors are met no matter how hard it is for them to get it they will not stop until they get it spalling skeletons chapel on yeah okay all right so we still have a lot of spaces that are there and we have to balance the equation um i don't think i'm still asking some more questions in terms of the um it's more of the mindset question now, changing the mindset from the eat a food mentality to, um, and that is where the, the vendors association really ought to step in to bridge the gap there. Because once you are a legitimate registered vendor in these spaces then it means that you would be you should be a part of that organization where you speak with one voice so we really ought not to have anyone on the street and as soon as the act is in place we are going to have some enforcement and seeking to remain as the host of the serenity resource connector and not go into <laughs> chamber mode <laughs> because i am sure that the the um the business community would have a lot to say on this, the implications for the businesses along Main Street. And um, that's the other side that the vendors might not be necessarily aware of. But there are implications for the other businesses in this space. And that's part of the responsibility of the municipal corporation to ensure that 
proper order and structure is maintained so that the parish can continue to, to grow in a sustainable way. We have a lot of commendations coming in for your team, Lady Francis. Y'all are, are going to go through this after the live to get that information. All right, um, Rome is asking a question here, but he had asked a question on another episode where we were talking with um, the Clarendon Police Division about the whole matter of, in terms of parking, the system in place to manage parking for trucks doing delivery along Main Street. Let's take that before we get to the- All right, so we have had some consultation with business persons prior to now, outlining that they need to submit a schedule of their delivery trucks. And then we will work along with the police once we get that schedule to ensure that um, those days are okay for delivery between X time and Y time. We are also in, um, enforcing or in dialogue with the business persons to have them use their delivery spaces. Um, a lot of the business persons don't use their approved delivery areas because it's easier for them to park on Main Street. Speaking about the capital, that is the capital of Pyrenean, Maypen Town Center. But um, it is work in progress that we'll have dialogue with the business persons as soon as we reach that point where we think we're in a good place with them as it relates to the delivery trucks and stuff. Then we'll start enforcing more, clamping, towing, the whole works. Right. This is an, another prime example of why it's important to con exercise control because it impedes the free flow of traffic and it affects That's affects right. Um, right, the activities in the town. All right, let's take this other question from Romeo Mitchell. Which of the act is used to seize goods from vendors who sell in a, the wrong place and charge, and you charge them a fee to get it back? Which of the act? All right, so you have the Town and Communities Act. We have the, um, the Goods for Sale Act. And you also have uh, a market and parochial law regulation that the team operates under. Okay, I trust that answers your question, Sir Mitchell. All right. All, the, all the apps can be found online. So if somebody has a query, they can go online or they can call the office and we can give them the information. Okay, and online at the Ministry of Local Government as well as the Clarendon Municipal Corporation? At Google. At or Google. the Ministry of Justice. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm pretty sure they're on the Ministry of Local Government. What I'll do is put the, I'll share the, the ads in the description, right? So you can have easy access to them, right? But for the average person that um, that's traversing the thoroughfare, what are the signs, markings that indicate no parking? Um, I think once somebody has a driver's license, um, they're pretty okay with the signs mm -hmm. that um, indicate no parking. So they throughout the sense. town, you'll see some yellow lines there. Oh. Once you see okay. yellow lines along the sidewalk, that would mean no parking. You have the no parking signs in red and white there. Once you see those signs, that means no parking. If there's a fire hydrant, you know you're not supposed to park within 20 feet of that fire hydrant. If there's an intersection, you know you can't park right there in the intersection. Likewise, if there's a corner. So um, we do have the signs put up. We are working on getting some more signs in place. But I'm sure that, especially in the town center of Maypen, we have um, yellow lines marked throughout the areas. So persons, once you see the yellow line, don't park there. It's a no parking area. All right. And, White um, lines mean you can park. Right. We're talking about Mapen because it's the capital, but this would be the same across town centers throughout the parish. Correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. All the way throughout the parish. All right. I don't think I was asking there, is there a preference given to the natives in terms of location? I believe this is stemming from that 
discussion we were having earlier it, as it relates to um, vendors, right? Okay, so um, no, all persons are treated on the same level. So once you make an application, the team will go out with you, identify a space, and if you are comfortable with that space, that space is assigned to you. Okay. So it's, it, it's not de dependent upon the parish or the town that you are from. It's just dependent on the availability of space and the type of goods that you're selling. Okay. All right. Andrea is asking a question about um, the police. Andrea, I'm going to ask you to join us on second Thursdays where we have the representatives from the Clarendon Division of the Police that can answer your question on that. So on the schedule will be, um, it's live on the YouTube page and it will be coming up at the end of this program. So on first Thursdays, each Thursday we have a conversation, a conversation with a different entity, government entity. So you can look out for that. So we can have that question answered. Okay, what is there to protect the vendor from the enforcers, seeing that they abuse their powers from time to time? Um, again, that's a very simple process. Once somebody feels like they have been abused, they put it in writing to the CEO. We have a committee that will look into the matter and do our investigation and provide feedback. Um, if it is um, that an employee of the corporation has abused their power, the HR department will deal with that accordingly. But all enforcers, to the best of my knowledge, are very polite. They also have done their customer service training. So if it is that somebody feels abused by the enforcers, they should report it to the corporation. OK. All right. We are taking the questions as we go along. All right. Um, when there is a need, you will be you will source what you need. All right. Uh, MTT is sharing views there. Um, Romeo Mitchell is saying on many occasions, I see single lane traffic along Main Street, Maypen, as double parking takes place with these huge delivery trucks. All right. To do, um, That's in Maypen. That's in Maypen along Main Street. All right. So as I said, we're working along with the business persons. So as soon as they provide their delivery schedule, the per, the parishioners will be more of a with the times of the delivery truck so we can work around them along with the JCF. Okay. So that is still work in progress. And we are hoping that we will see a lot of progress in short order. All right. Because we are getting more vehicles on the road as much as the gas price is very high. So we're going to have to deal with that, right? Mm -hmm. El Bueno, are there no parking signs on the wall of Muir Park Road gazetted? All right, so Muir Park Avenue is a gazetted um, street for no parking. So right, that, my so answer would be yes. It would be yes. Okay. All right, El Bueno, so you're good with that. How far ahead do they need to present the delivery schedule? That's not finalized as yet, is it? No, that's not finalized. No, it's not finalized as yet. No. Okay. So stay tuned. We'll bring you updates on that, and I'm sure the information will be presented. So you, we are all off as to what exactly we'll maintain in this space because it's supposed to be a communal space where we all go to do business and take care of our daily happenings. All right. We've been having a lot of discussions here and I'm sure we would have answered this question <laughs> that I had here about um, the uh, what mechanisms are in place to control public vending. And you would have shared earlier in terms of the access to the market space and how the vendors can get get that access. So if there's anything that you would mm -hmm. want to add as to um, the control, you have your enforcement team that goes out from time to time. Is there anything else on that? The enforcement team, as I said, work, works along with the JCF. So once you see a team out there, there's also always one or two JCF members 
along with them trying to ensure that the streets are cleared of the vendors. But it's like a cat and mouse game. They clear one street and they run to the other street. You have to go back to the other street. So, but we're working on it and we are trying to see how best we can educate the vendors to have them go into the legit spaces as opposed to be running them down. Indeed. All right. Chanae Smith is saying that she thinks we need to have some more of those no parking signs in Kellett's. So that's something to look into. All right. So for Kellett's, so for Kellett's, as soon as we acquire that property for parking, then it will be easier for us to um, indicate more no parking zones in Kellett's. Okay. All right. Romy has made um, a comment here. Uh, what I'll ask is for those business places who have parking or delivery fa um, facilities, even while we wait on that act to be finalized, what can be done to ensure that they utilize the facility that they have? All right. So we can... Um we can we as a corporation can write those persons so um we will write the business places and ask them to use our delivery i'll ensure that that is done all right so you'll take a note of the name mentioned there and um do the yes, investigations and um, get that done all right so that takes us to where we come in as citizens business operators how can we help to ensure that these, these um, measures are carried out? Um, it's simple. Um, the business operators, um, especially in the town of Mapin, do not have the authority to give persons permission to vend in the area. So um, if it is that they want their area to be an approved vending space, they should write to the corporation and we can work on that. But the citizens you don't encourage um, the vendors to be on the streets. So you don't buy on the streets. So you go in the market or the legit um, areas for shopping and shop there. So um, it's just everybody coming together, realizing that vending on the streets and the type of vending on the streets is not safe. So once you go in the registered vending areas within the township, um, I think we'll have an awesome tone as it relates to a monetized tone, you know? Right. And if there are no buyers, really the sellers don't need to be there, right? Exactly. So if all the buyers go into the market, then all the sellers will go into the market. All right. But there's something that I noticed with a number of the, um, the modernized town centers is that the, mm -hmm. um, the facilities are welcoming and so people are attracted to going into those spaces. So that's something we're going to have to work on those public-private partnerships to ensure that we have those nice spaces that we want to go in and shop comfortably. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's something we're going to be working on. All right. I don't think we're going to drop the idle. You're a thinker and you're thinking good. All right, German Baker is asking, in terms of the sign in the township, such as no parking, et cetera, for the ones that have been defaced, will they be replaced? Yes. We'll, we'll replace all traffic signs within the town center. In short order. All right. Short order means within the next, the current quarter or the next quarter. What are we looking at? The next quarter. The next quarter. All right, we're gonna hold you to that, Lady Francis. All right, mm -hmm. right. El Bueno, what can be done about the vendor in Bargain Village, especially those at KFC Drive Through? We we'll continue to block the pathway, making it difficult for vehicles to utilize the drive through. All right. Um. So we have spoken to the proprietors of the Bargain Village. Um. They have given the vendors notice outlining that they need to go in the market space um subsequent to that we shall be enforcing and seizing goods until everybody goes into the market all right if there's no one entertaining 
the vending, illegal vending, then that will help. All right. So that would have answered that question in terms of what we can do. So as business operators, you're not at liberty to have vendors vending along the thoroughfare with whether bargain village or any other any of the other spaces and for right. shoppers if we do not bend down to buy from those on the handcart or so on they will find themselves in the market space so we each have a responsibility to ensure that we help to maintain law and order in our space all right and you would have outlined a number of the other entities that they team works along with because it's not just um, a municipal corporation it has to be a collaborative approach and um, one of the things that we seem to miss sometimes is that when we have this illegal vending and the illegal parking it impedes the movement of the fire truck so if there is a fire god forbid there is a fire and the fire truck needs to get from point a to point b we have that to consider for the illegal vending that's taking place. They're selling fruits and they're selling food that they're cutting and all of that. There's no proper bathroom facility. God help us if there's a breakout of some of those really dangerous virus in the space. So the Ministry of Health mm -hmm. comes in there. So these are some of the things that we really have to consider. We do things daily mm -hmm. without thinking about them, but we can help to curtail some of these challenges that we have, take the pressure off the police system, some pressure off the health system. We have a part to play as citizens, and that's what we're encouraging each of us to play our part, to make Lady Francis and her team's life easier, and to make Clarendon a better place to live, mm -hmm. raise family, and do business. All right, we are okay. coming up to the one hour mark, but we have some quick ones here. Let's see if we can get these in and then we get take your wrap up. All right, so um, I'm seeing here Mr. Davis asked about parking in Spallings. So yes, the mini clerk um, consultation center there, that's across from the Texaco gas station, you can park there. As it relates to littering, um, we work closely with the NSWA, the SPM team, so um, there's an enforcement arm where our municipal police are gazetted as enforcers so we can charge businesses and individuals um, issue your tickets for littering. As it relates to the old police station, that property is managed by the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Um, I see where Mr. Mitchell is asking about signs for the bridge. Um, we will speak with the I'll speak with the Rosa Works Department and see how we can implement those signs. Um, the question is, um, the question he's asking is the sign that's clearly stated that there should be no large trucks utilizing that um, bridge. So what's in place? For All right, so um, I'm not sure where that sign is, but once that sign is up, I'll, um, I'll inform the JCF and we'll work hand in hand to ensure that that is enforced. It has been there for years. It has been there for years? All right. So we'll have yes. that enforced. And I see where somebody is asking about beautification for Jamaica 60. I guess this person has not been in the parish for a while because all areas have um, started for um, beautification. There's a big Jamaica 60 sign with loads of awesome Jamaican ladies as you enter the town and come through the bridge and we have also started painting the town black, green, and gold. And you have different communities um, that are also black, green, and gold. The corporation buildings are black, green, and gold laced, along with the JCDC. So um, we'll invite Mr. El Bueno to visit the parish of Clarendon to see <laughs> what the JCDC, along with the CMC, is doing for Jamaica 60. Indeed. Uh, yes, I did see some work going on and called Mayor to, um, to let him know that it's looking good. Right. Um, I believe it's because they, um, there's been a, a delay across the island, El Bueno, as it relates to um, Jamaica 60. It's not just for independence. It's going to 
Jamaica 60 is going to extend beyond independence and we want to keep the beautification going and um, a lot more, you'll be seeing a lot more happening as we um, go into next week and leading um, onwards. And Mayor will speak to that in terms of the plans that are in place to facilitate. You have been an awesome, awesome audience. Martin Samuels, rules and regulations are set to govern a country or society. Whenever we do not follow rules and regulation, we will only have chaos. That's a great note on which to close this episode. Thank you so much for that. That is exactly so, Sir Samuels. Um, if, it, if, if it is that um, persons have questions, they can direct the questions or send an email to the Clarendon Municipal Corporation email and we'll respond accordingly because I see there are more questions coming in. So you can just send us an email or give us a phone call and I'll answer those questions. Indeed. All right. And we'll ensure that all the details are on the in this communication here. And remember, we have the conversation. We're going to be going through all the departments at the Municipal Corporation. We do this every fourth Thursday. Uh, 8 p.m. right here. So if you have not yet subscribed, make sure to subscribe, set your notification and come first Thursday. We are going to have another Culture Corner with JCDC. Check out the schedule and join us each week as we continue to keep you informed as to how these different entities are operating, what's happening in Clarendon, a lot's happening in Clarendon and we want to keep you in the know right what's the email address a member of the team please drop the email address in the comments so that we can get el bueno connected so that we can keep the conversation going even after this live this is just an opener to get you connected with the different departments so you know exactly where to send your request and remember you can always write to Mr. Ron Blake, CEO at the Municipal Corporation at 3 Sevens Road, Maypen, Clarendon, and he will direct your query to the relevant department to get you the response that you need. All right, El Buena, look out for the information. If you don't get it in this feed, it will be there after the live. Lady Francis, final thoughts before we wrap for this episode. Um, I just like to thank everybody in my department at the JCF, MOA, Chauffeur Brigade, JCDC, everybody that we work hand in hand with, all the departments that work hand in hand with the commercial service department, and just help us to have a culture change, a mindset change as it relates to order within the parish so that we can have a modernized parish in short order. Well said, and that leads me to. Yes, to thank you for joining us on this episode. You did an awesome job in terms of responding to the questions. And I'm sure other questions are being generated even after we close this. And I know that you'll continue to work with your team to answer those mm -hmm. questions. And also to thank you who are able to join us live and those who are watching the replay. Continue to stay safe as we dress up for jamaica 60. all right we have to bring the vibe and keep the good vibes flowing all right god bless you all stay tuned and see you again you. next thursday same time for another discussion here on the serenity resource connector take care